So what you can expect by the end of this video is that you know what to expect from the UWC interview, that you feel more prepared and hopefully less nervous about the UWC interview. And I will also tell you about the common mistakes that you should avoid, as well as give you some tips and tricks for the UWC interview. everyone to Kevin's World. My name is Kevin and I'm a UWC Robert Bosch College graduate as well as a soon-to-be medical student at Barcelona Medical School. This video is aimed for all of those who are applying to UWC or are thinking about applying to UWC and wondering what the interview is gonna be like. So about a week ago I made a video called how to get into UWC and I will link it down below as well as well as somewhere up here. Basically I got a lot of positive feedback from you so I definitely think that there is demand for more content like this. If you're one of my subscribers who is here for the medical school or university content don't worry I will continue to produce this content as well but this video is sort of a follow-up to the videos that I already made of how to get into UWC and today we will focus on the interview. Also, at the end of this video, I will answer some of the questions that you asked me on Instagram. If you do not follow me on Instagram yet, why not? Definitely make sure to check out my Instagram and I engage a lot of with you on my story. So if you do not want to miss that, definitely make sure to check out my Instagram as well. As always, I would really appreciate it if you could support the channel by giving this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to my channel and hit that little bell button so you get notified when I upload new videos in the future. So most national committees will have a second application or second selection round, which is gonna be most likely an interview or some sort of personal meeting where they will ask you questions or would like to get to know you in person. So what we do in Germany is that we have a whole selection weekend, but at this selection weekend, we also have two interviews and both interviews last between 15 to 20 minutes and you have them with two interviewers. Most of the times one interviewer asks the questions while the other takes note, but at the end of the interview, the other interviewer can also ask some questions if they have some. In general, I would say that UWC interviews are similar but also different to regular admission interviews. I found the atmosphere to be very friendly and that's something that surprised me because I had some interviews before but more in a formal setting, for example for a job. At UWC, it didn't feel like an interview or it's like an assessment but more like a conversation. And if I had to describe those two interviews, I would say that the first interview was about me and my application and the second interview was about my motivation for UWC and if I'm sort of suitable or fit in into the bigger UWC picture. So there were a lot of scenarios that they presented me with and asked me what would be my response in that situation or how would I deal with a certain situation. The two interviews are a bit different from each other, but in general, of course, they check for the same qualities in you. So probably one of the questions is, can you prepare for the UWC interview? And actually the German National Committee says no, you cannot prepare for interview, but I don't think that's true. And I think you can definitely prepare for the UWC interview. You should not rehearse answers and you don't know the questions beforehand, but there are some things that I think you can do in order to sort of prepare yourself and be ready when it comes to the actual interview. So the first step, as with any interview, any application for anything, is that you should know what is the organization or the institution that you're applying to looking for. If there's a selection process, there obviously have to be some selection criteria. So familiarize yourself uh, with what UWC stands for and what might someone who is willing to give you a place at UWC and maybe also a big scholarship looking for in you that sort of demonstrates that sort of demonstrates that you are suitable for that experience or that you would make a great UWC student. And with that knowledge, you should go into the interview and if they ask you questions like, tell us something about yourself or something, while it should be authentic, you also know how to sort of play your strengths. So sort of what goes in hand with this is that you also should do some research about how UWC was founded, what is the history of UWC, where is the movement right now and so how many colleges are they? And maybe you should also do some research about the different colleges is there a college that you particularly like? Because those questions might come up and they might ask you, what do you know about UWC? Is there a specific college you favor? And then it's definitely a good thing if you have some answers to those questions. So in terms of preparation, maybe that is not really active preparation, but it's that you know your application, your written application that you most likely submitted before the interview. For the interviews, the application is going to be the basis of sort of the questions they will ask. They might ask some follow-up question to some things you mentioned or to a certain topic you raised in an essay. So what I actually did, even though that's not the most environmentally friendly way, I admit that, is that I had a printed version of my application application with me. So when I was in a train to the selection weekend or the night before my interview, I just would read through it. Obviously I knew what I said in my application, but maybe there were some details. It's just good to have them like sort of 
fresh in your memory. Another thing is that UWC is an institution or is an organization that is sort of related to politics. So let me explain what I mean by that. UW students generally should be aware of what are ongoing issues in the world, what are some inequalities that, that are present in our daily lives, uh, how is the political landscape right now looking in the world, is there something that we could actively do. So, so it would be a good idea to read the news regularly before your interview, you should do that anyway, but especially before your interview, be aware of some of the things that are going on right now in the world, if that's just like sort of politics, or if that's maybe, or if that's maybe sort of a social issue that is concerning you, or just something like that, have something that you could present if somebody would ask you, is this something right now that's going on in the world which sort of interests you? Um, so another thing is that you should know who you are, and that sounds and that sounds a bit odd, I know, like, of course I know who I am, I'm Kevin, right? But what I mean by that is that you should know what makes you you, what are some of your passion, your motivations, um, what is it that you would like to do in the future? And then you can connect this to what is it that I can contribute to UWC and what is it that I expect from UWC. So if you're aware what you can contribute to UWC, but also what you expect from UWC and what you would like to gain from UWC, you can talk about how you might utilize what you sort of gain from UWC in your future. I think generally that shows that you're really committed and that you're interested and that you're actually really motivated and sort of that you're not just thinking about okay what can I gain but also what can I bring to the table and um, so that obviously shows the interviewer that you're a proactive person and that you take some initiative. Now let's talk about some mistakes that you should avoid. So the first one and I think that's quite obvious but still don't be late. If you're turning up late to your interview without a good excuse this only shows the interviewer that you're not taking it serious enough to make the effort to be on time. Of course when something happens that is out of your control nobody will blame you for that. So another mistake is don't pretend to be someone who you are not because most likely the interviewers will realize that you sort of acting and not just like your authentic self and they obviously looking who are you and not who is sort of a persona that you are just right now sort of impersonating or uh, pretending to be. So just stay true to yourself. I know it's a stressful situation. I know that there is a lot of things going on in your mind and you think like this is so important and you have to impress the interviewers. But honestly, if they already invited you to the interview, they saw something in you that interests them. So just, just stay true to yourself and be authentic and then everything should be fine. Or another thing that you should avoid, I wouldn't necessarily call it a mistake, but I know that I did it, is that you compare yourself to other people. So in Germany, we have two selection weekends and you're there with around 60 other applicants together. And obviously all of the people who apply to UWC are really cool and awesome people. And you talk to them and you realize, oh my gosh, they already did this and that, and they have those and those experiences and they did this kind of volunteering and they've been there and they won this award. And that's awesome and it's great. And you should talk to the other applicants and make some friends and just like exchange yourself but don't be intimidated by, but don't compare yourself to other people the, the interviewers or the selection committee they saw something in you and there's no point in comparing yourself to other people and, and thinking like oh my gosh why did they even invite me if there are so many other cool people here that did so much more than me just ban those thoughts and don't think that way just just stay positive and don't compare yourself to others so my the last mistake i'd like to mention is that you should not go into the interview and then sort of put the interviews in the situation where they have to force every single piece of information out of you. Um, that's very tiring for the interviewers and the interview should feel more like a conversation. Obviously in a conversation you also sort of are proactive and you engage with the other person. So if they ask you something, of course answer the question, but don't force the interviewers that they have to ask 25 follow-up questions if you could put it into one answer, if you know what I mean. I hope that makes sense. If so my last sort of piece of advice or maybe some information that I'd like to share with you is that it's really helpful sometimes to approach some UWC students or alumni, alumna um, from your country or a person who applied for your national committee. As I said, most national committees have sort of like an interview or something, but obviously questions differ um, the structure differs sometimes. As I said, in Germany we have a whole selection weekend. I know that some national committees only do a selection day and some do just like Skype interviews. And it's a good idea to maybe approach someone who has been who has been through the process of your national committee. So you can actually go on Instagram and maybe see if you can find someone uh, from your country or a person 
person which applied through through your national committee and just approach them and say hi my name is mm -hmm. and I'm considering applying to UWC could you maybe tell me a bit about the interview experience of course be polite and also be patient because UWC students are often very busy so but also be aware that applicants and UWC students at least in Germany are told that they should not disclose too much information about the interview because this would put certain people in a position where they have like an advantage over other people who did not get those information. So, so now it's time to answer your questions and I ask you on Instagram, if you do not follow me there yet, please do that, to ask me some questions and yeah, I'm just gonna answer some of them right now. So one of the questions was by UWC Germany or UWC unterstrich Deutschland, um, how my life is going post UWC or how is it going post UWC? So as some of you may know, I graduated from UWC Robert Bosch College around around two and a half months ago, so around March, a bit earlier because of the outbreak of COVID-19. And we're sort of the corona generation, so we did not have a sort of typical end to the whole UWC experience, which made it a bit hard to transition out of sort of campus life and UWC life in the beginning. And it was weird and it still is weird sometimes if I think about it. But in generally, I would say that I'm doing quite good. Um, I'm at home, I'm spending a lot of time with my family and with my friends, eating good food, watching Netflix, and just like I have more time to pursue my hobby and other interests that I have um, but of course it's weird and I miss it um, but I would say that after those sort of challenging and exhausting times of two years of UWC although they were amazing um, but not gonna lie the IB took a lot of energy from me I think it's now time to sort of recharge my batteries and get ready for university life and for the next chapter of my life yeah I'm excited for university but I always will stay connected to UWC and try to sort of engage with UWC in other ways. So another good question is by the aspiring medic and the question is have you got a degree? So no I do not have a degree I will um, I will study medicine as my undergraduate degree and I recently finished the IB diploma so the international baccalaureate which is sort of like similar to the A levels or to the German Abitur if you're one of my German viewers so it's like my high school diploma but I do not have yet a university degree. So another good question by another fellow uwc -er, and one of my first things at UWC Red Bottish College is missing IB or RBC and I do not miss the IB but I definitely miss RBC and the people at RBC but I'm glad that the IB is over and that I sort of made it through those two years. Although there were there were points where I was like, I'm not gonna make it to the end, like no way. <laughs> so this is it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, I would, and if you did, I would really appreciate it if you could give this video a like and also subscribe to my channel for more content. I upload, I try to upload twice a week and most of the times there's some sort of medical school or university uh, related content and then there's some UWC or lifestyle or anything um, else. So if you have any questions left, feel free to DM me on my Instagram or leave them down in the comments. Also tell me in the comments if you're considering applying to UWC. And I hope I see you all next time and until then, stay safe and bye bye.